Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, this is crazy. To me, it's crazy because nobody really, like, in terms of true crime, like, what, ha- like, what, what the reason I, I say this is because, like, most true crime, you listen to podcasts, and in nine times out of ten, it's like the gruesome missing murder of the decapitated skulls of whatever. And it's like, I get that. But also, there's this beautiful, these beautiful things that people miss, such as this. Uh, there's a man in Oklahoma who was executed, right? His name was Donald Grant. Uh, and I read this this morning. This is fucking... It's, it just goes to show that, like, I still bet in prison, uh, even when you're on death row, I bet it's still, you have to look tough. It's like you just don't want to be that guy who gets strapped up or strapped in. I don't even know. But And then they're going to lethal inject you and you're going to die in front of everybody. And then the victims are like looking in. That's wild enough that I would want it over as quick as possible. To say something, because they ask you, right, in front, because it's just like a window. It's like almost a performance. To be like, hey, this guy killed your whoever. Not, to, not a problem. You get to watch him. And it's like a really weird thing that I still don't I'm wrestle with. And I know that obviously capital punishment is one of the huge things i don't mean to get too heavy guys i'm trying to keep this light i'm trying to keep it on the track not off two months went by guys you got to give me some you know give give me a minute here but what i'm saying is still in the south they're not they don't play that shit so if you if you do if you're out there murdering stick it don't be there go elsewhere and you see the smarties they they kind of avoid it all they're like you know if they're in the south they're in florida and that's like almost a different thing it's like a it's its own fucking region but i got to say this guy okay so like saying what i said about the prison it's like i'm sure as i know i only base this on prison shows that i've watched as we all have hopefully <laughs> but um if you're lucky enough, you're 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 only watching the but but it's, it's it affects us everyone around you and your friends friends and your family and all that stuff. But I'm sure that like once you get in there and you have to pick your team and all that stuff, it's rough. You know, you still got to look like a badass. It's just the way you, I think you're gonna last a little bit longer than everybody else in there without any like, you know, heavy trauma. You know, um, maybe get maybe intimidation is a big fa- factor. You know, they always look like they, they their chests are a little bit bigger when they come out. But hell, you got the time for the push-ups. Anyway, this guy, Donald Grant, let me give you his his look, which is, you know, it's tough. He, again, he's going up against stiff competition here with the last guy. I, you know what I mean? So there's your boy, um, Donald Grant. Uh, obviously had, you know, uh, not done great thing, but he murdered a hotel manager and an employee at a La Quinta Inn. And and, and the robbery, unfortunately, go, goes under that category of, wow, you did that to basically make sure there were no witnesses at your crime. The crime that would probably only, you'd only be sentenced to five to 10 years for because you're robbing the place. Okay, gunpoint, I'm not quite sure. I'm not a lawyer. Seems like a lesser deal than to cap two people. But he's probably on some heavy duty stuff and like things were just like he was just it was a perfect storm of chaos and violence. All I'm saying is the guy ended up there. He's it's his day. He's 46. This is years later. The families of the victims are behind glass and they're going to stare at this guy. And I just I always think about like how horrible would it be to be in that position just to be that person. Right. And I, I'm always asked myself, who would I be? Like, would I want to watch that shit? And the answer is probably absolutely, because just based on my interest in it. But I just, I think it, I think it will change you, is what I'm saying. You watch a person die, I think it changes you. So, be expected for change. <laughs> anyway, how we doing? I don't know. Check in with me, but uh, but uh, I think we're all right. So, that's not the interesting thing. Uh, this man did a horrible act, and unfortunately, had to pay for it with his life. What the what the real special news is, is that in his last moments, uh, conscious and uh, uninjected, I guess, you're asked to give a final statement or if you have any words. Nine times out of ten, it's, you know, an apology to the victims and something religious. This guy, Donald Grant, let's throw him up. This guy goes, yo, God. I got this. No medicine. 
I didn't take nothing. Brooklyn for life. Brooklyn for life. And then he con- he continued to speak for a little bit, but I wish that was all of it was. Because when I saw the, like, he continued to say some other shit, I think this was just the highlighted, like, newsworthy caption, and they knew they had something special with it. Because it was, the Brooklyn for life is just... You could say anything you want about like, yo, God, I got this. No need for your help, which is what he said. And then he said no medication, meaning like, whoa, because I would probably have to tell you in that scenario, and I don't, but I don't know about you guys, but like, I probably want a little bit of mother's helper. You know, that would be a very stressful moment, if not the most stressful moment in anyone's life. Uh, but then again, you know, this guy murdered in a fucking inn somewhere in Oklahoma, And how how do you not put two and two together and just go, look at me. I'm crazy. I'm going to come and get you if you tell anybody. Uh, Thanks for the money. And just don't have a weapon. And then, I don't know, it just seems logical. But then again, this is all fucking crazy. So uh, 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 he continued to speak, but they cut his mic. That's tough. Okay. Um. It's one thing to to be asked to say your piece and not necessarily know what you're going to say. This guy definitely knew what he was wanting to say about things, and he definitely made that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's so, like, <clears throat> that is a true New Yorker is what I'll say. That is a that is a New York state of mind right there. Wow. Uh, uh, damn, that was early in the morning, too. That's crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sure it was nightmarish for, you know, the again, the this guy probably ruined so many lives. But, I mean, I cannot believe he went out Brooklyn for life. Um, 